we offend? Huh? How can the Couches team continue to win? Who did we offend? I want to know. God! Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Comfort. Thank you so much for being with me today. If you are new here, welcome. I see I have some new subscribers and we just hit a new milestone. I'm really, really, really appreciative. Thank you so much for joining our team, our family, our squad. We like to kiki. We like to give out information. We like to read people that need to be read and give people their flowers that need to be given them. All right, so as you guys can see from the title of this video, it is challenge recap day yes y'all so we are gonna get into episode 13 of the challenge season 37 spies lies and allies and we are going to dissect what happened in this episode y'all it was a great episode like it had drama between you know deliberation it's starting to be a little bit more vet on vet who was on the outskirts with the vet alliance is very clear team emerald is still on my last nerves but what what else is new shout out to the i think it's the challenge fandom podcast facebook group because we see we see the the casey stuff that i've been saying in this video forever if we could like to rewind y'all can go hit this playlist right here so you could see that all right let's get into this episode you guys so first when they get back into the house if you don't recall of course go watch that video it's also included in the top of the playlist of what happened last episode and basically what happened is that it it was Emmy up against Patina after Patina basically got dragged all season. I mean, not all season, but all episode by the vet saying that basically she doesn't deserve to be here. Namely, a rookie Emmy who I voted herself as rookie of the year. Shout out to everybody else that is the fan who agreed with me, who understood that Emmy girl, like, relax. We haven't voted you rookie of the year. Rookie of the year is Emmanuel. Everybody knows that. He hasn't been to elimination. He's been winning daily challenges. He does what needs to be done. He's fun. He's quirky, but like, cool also that's rookie of the year right now you are not rookie of the year ma'am like just simmer yourself but all in all she went up against Bettina in this weird rocket challenge and Emmy ended up winning and she went in so that she could switch from team Ruby to team Sapphire and be with her uncle CT and so that's just what she did right so now they're back into the house with Emmy and uncle CT and basically she's just kind of expressing that you know she loves CT that she really looks up to him he's like her role model which I mean not a bad role model you know he's a solid role model girl I get it I'm team CT and that you know he's who basically she wants to be like in the challenge like he's such a good game player and that's what she wants to be like right so then remember because Emmy is now on team Sapphire she traded places with Amanda so now Amanda is on team Ruby with Nelson Corey Logan Big T uh, I think that's it right yeah so Kyle is telling Logan that Amanda is loud and obnoxious but she is really smart when it comes to puzzles but she's probably but she's probably gonna be toxic to their team like so basically trying to give Logan some pointers on how to deal with Amanda you know he had her as a partner they were on a team together the whole thing right so Logan is like he knows Amanda's gonna be toxic to the team he know he feels like she's gonna be poison I'm like damn not them all I'll shade Amanda at the gate I mean Amanda is. Amanda listen consistency though like Amanda I've grown to like like her now like she I right, she cool because she also kind of reads people that I can't stand like some of the vets that are feeling themselves too much she kind of gets them together which I don't mind Amanda's a lot it's a lot it's 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 not shocking that her and Ashley are bestie like they both Ooh. so basically um we pan to Nelson you know Nelson is like Amanda's big brother like he looks at her little as a little sister but he does know that she doesn't take the game seriously that she plays too much and that he feels like that it's going to be toxic to their team so he is not happy about that so Corey says the same thing that basically their team's a mess now that they lost a strong player Emmy and <laughs> and gain the weakest player in the game is what he says. I'm like, damn, Corey. I didn't think of Amanda. I thought they had considered Amanda like one of the strong girls because of, well, I guess at that, at this point, yeah, Amanda's like the weakest player in the game. I low-key feel like Amanda's weaker than Nani, honestly. At least Nani's social game is like great. So uh, he says that. And so then Amanda, I guess, kind of feels the tension or feels that like, you know, they're trying to basically read her and play her as if she's not an asset to their team. And she's like, if they're going to 
going to treat me like the weakest player, then I'm going to, they're going to treat me like trash and I'm going to act like that. That if they treat her like a quote shitty player, that she's going to act like one. And so everybody's on board <laughs> with their assignments. So then we move to Emmanuel in the kitchen with CT and Devin and they're making some type of something with, with meat and Emmanuel is smacking meat. And basically he says that in Spain, you know, they, it's like a whole ritual, the way that they, you know, kill and skin pigs and cook pigs and all of this, all of this really like gross, weird, bizarre stuff, but that's right on brand for Emmanuel. And um, yeah, yuck, gross. We don't need to know the pig part. Like we all like bacon. We don't want to know the pig part of it. So y'all, then Emmanuel is basically kind of talking about that he's, you know, really proud that he made it. He doesn't know how he escaped elimination. He's the only rookie that has not been into elimination and that he doesn't know how he escaped it, but that, you know, he's sure that, you know, the vet should be looking at him like a threat because clearly he's doing something right. And he is, y'all, he's, Emmanuel, he's fully the rookie of the year. Like, Emmy, have a sit. He's the rookie of the year. He's done so well. And he really is not problematic at all. Like, he kind of goes with the flow, but like, he's cool. I didn't mind him. He did not bother me at all. He was entertaining. I didn't mind the twerking. So speaking of twerking and him entertaining Tori last uh, episode, so y'all know they're like full canoodle at this point. They are fully like a challenge, little challenge house couple. So y'all, they are, you know, doing whatever and they end up in the bathroom. And then Big T, I guess Big T wants to use the bathroom. So Big T tries to walk to the bathroom and sees them and she's like, oh, sorry. You know how when you catch people, but Emmanuel is naked and Tori is fully clothed. So I can only deduct what might've been happening. Um, And yuck, I'm disgusted. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Gross. He's he gonna talk about he's talk, man was talking about he's a plumber, so he was trying to fix the piping in the toilet. Yuck. You were trying to pipe something else into somebody, something else, into another orifice. But you know, I digress. But gross, they're still doing their thing and it's disgusting. Yay. <laughs> so then um Ashley's Ashley and her confessional is like she feels like Emmanuel is playing the game really well, and that you know he's partnered with Casey, which keeps him safe, and now he's you know canoodling with Tori, and that she feels like he's Paula Dicking, like you know, Amanda coined and that he it's really smart on his part and I'm just like I mean I don't know if that's what he's doing we don't know Emmanuel well, well enough this is our first season with him maybe we'll find out but I'm just like sometimes people just you know first of all Emmanuel is good enough that he's been good at the game and he's been part of, partnered with Casey which is a good gameplay for him because she's connected to so many other annoying ass people in the house in their little annoying ass alliance so yes that is good for him but he did I don't think he knew that coming into it and that's when he chose her as a partner they've been partners the entire time and he's been pulling his wig. I don't really think it's fair to be like, oh, he's just doing that for, I, I don't like it when people all, especially people like Ashley, people like Ashley, Amanda, who always think everyone's scheming like them, like everybody's not scheming like you. Some people are, but I'm just like, girl, um, what what would give you that inkling at this point? At this point, he's performed well and he ha he's partnered with Casey and he happens to like Tori. He liked Michelle before, she wasn't helping him none. So, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know about that. So then we pan to Josh, who's talking to Logan in uh, Spanish, right? Right? And you know, basically Josh is kind of talking to Logan about how he understands that it must be hard for Logan because his first language is Spanish and not English and all the stuff is in English. Most people speak English in the house. The gameplay even like the, you know, politicking and stuff is in English. So he may not even be understanding what's going on. Logan is like, yeah, it does kind of make it complex for him, but that he's not even there for the money per se. He just likes to win. He wants to win. That's why he's there. He's like a competitive person. He's played a lot of sports. Basically Josh is saying that they both, well, they both say that that they both feel like they have each other's backs and that it's nice and Josh is like I see him as like a brother now which I can understand if I was like in a house with a girl who was Nigerian and then on top of that from like my same tribe or something like yeah that would be my sis immediately so I get that I understand that 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 makes sense so then we pan to Corey and Nelson talking right so Corey and Nelson are talking about how you know the game is about to flip and that clearly the vets alliance is about to be really really kaput and that they don't trust Josh they don't know where he he stands. He feels like Josh might have it out for him. And Corey's like, they threw me in already, so I don't trust them. Basically, Corey and Nelson are only relying on each other till the end. They don't trust these vets as they should not because, I mean, they threw you in before. Clearly, they don't have your back. Clearly, you're expendable to them. So, you know, I feel like that's a, a smart thing to, to do. Just stick with Nelson. That's your boy. That's your real friend outside of the game. He's proven loyalty to you as you have him. So, let that be it. So, then, y'all, they're about to go to the Daily Channel. 
challenge, right? But I thought this was so funny because Big T, big, first of all, Big T, girl, you are not helping our matter. You're not helping, you're not helping our situation. You're not helping our case, okay? We, I mean, I would be the strongest, I would hope, you know what I mean? Because, you know, see, Team CT, we don't play that. But Big T says, sis is over here eating donuts. Y'all, these people are dressed to go, I guess, to wait for the bus or whatever. This girl is eating donuts, chocolate donuts. And so I guess Team, Team Emerald is like yelling at her and like singing a song, right? Like, um, breakfast of losers, breakfast of losers or something like that. And then she's like, Corey, they're bullying me. So Corey comes in and is like, breakfast of losers and knocks the donut out of her hand as he should because sis, really, 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 you know that we're, we're not where we need to be, okay? So like, I don't want to read you, but put the donut down. Put it down. All right, y'all. So they get to the daily challenge. The daily challenge is called sunken intelligence, right? So basically on this challenge, they have a gigantic, like 150 foot rope that is submerged underwater and is attached to a chest. So they, and it's, it is tangled. So that cell has to untangle that rope, pull it out of the water with the chest and open that chest once they get on land and get their gem, which is going to be emerald, ruby, or sapphire and put it on a podium. And whoever does that in the fastest time wins the daily challenge and is the agency, y'all. So it looks easy enough, but it is, it, of course, it proves not because it's submerged underwater. So basically Team Emerald goes first, you know, they talk all their la la la. But once they get into the water, y'all, they are not performing as fast as they thought they would. Like they are struggling under the water. They keep going underwater and then coming back up because obviously you can only stay underwater for so long. So they're struggling and everybody's looking at them like, ooh, uh-uh, not Team Emerald struggling, okay, what's happening, right? So it was taking them a long time. Like then they finally get the rope untangled, right? They get the rope untangled and then they start pulling it. And this takes them like, it takes them like 18 minutes to get the rope untangled, right? Which is not great time. So they, they are start pulling the rope with the chest and then the chest gets detached from their rope. And the chest is what has the gym that they need to put on the podium, y'all. So they have to swim back underwater, get the chest, and they finally get the chest, open it up and put their gem on the podium, right? And I think it takes them almost, almost 20 minutes to do it. Just not what anybody expected for Team Emerald. So they go first, right? So then next is Team Sapphire and Team Sapphire, oh, I didn't even say who's on Team Emerald. I think we know at this point, like no, they haven't lost anybody. The same people that was on last episode. Like I just, uh, I'm so over it with them. So on Team Sapphire, which is, you know, Team CT, is CT, Kyle, Emmy, and Ashley, right? So Team Sapphire, they go into the water, y'all. <laughs> And only CT and Ashley came to work, okay? Because Kyle's ass. Kyle is going, Kyle is trying to pull this rope from on top of the water. He doesn't want to go in. He, I guess he's not really good. He can't hold his breath that much. Ashley's getting frustrated with him. CT is like, Emmy is over there untangling the rope. Like she's untangling yarn, like just so slow. Emmy's like, I, I'm doing whatever they tell me to do, but I don't know what to do. So girl, you're not doing what they tell you to do. Do what CT's doing. Like go in the water, do what, since you're so strong, since you've done so much to make it here, like do what you need to do, sis. I thought you were the rookie of the year. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like calm down. I think that's going to be the theme for like, y'all just got to calm down. Pride goeth before the fall. You can't be hyping yourself too much. And then when you are like whack, it's like, yeah, girl, we knew. Remember when we said that? Like chill, you know? All in all, they finally, well, CT and Ashley mostly, get the rope untangled and it takes them about, you know, 15, 16 minutes. It takes them about the same time as Team Emerald, it looks like anyway, but obviously probably a little bit slower because they have a lot less people than everybody else. So they pull the rope out, pull the chest out and they put their ruby gem on the podium okay they finish as well y'all then we get to team ruby and you know team ruby is always under fire because they have you know logan is a rookie Corey was already thrown in Corey, and it's a guy elimination day i did forget to mention that and so the guys are kind of on edge like okay they're the ones that really need to win y'all team ruby who remind you has Corey, nelson logan big t and amanda right amanda's the newbie on team ruby <laughs> that rhymed so then y'all they get into the water. Amanda says they tell her not to do nothing. They didn't tell you that, girl. They told you to organize the rope. Amanda is playing. Amanda is playing inside the water. Amanda is playing joke. Thinks Amanda's the game. Amanda's doing Titanic on <laughs> on the little buoy whatever thing that they have that they're, they're supposed to be helping dock the rope. Amanda's doing Titanic. Like, I'm dead ass. Ashley goes, Amanda did the Titanic! And Amanda's... <laughs> 
Like, girl. And Amanda's like, they told me not to do anything. They told me that they didn't want me to touch anything. So that's just what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna have fun. And Corey is pissed. Nelson is pissed. Like, Big T is going hard. Big T is working. You know, Big T does good in water. So Big T is doing what needs to be done. Logan is working. You know what I mean? Like, he's hustling. Amanda's playing. Amanda is, 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 <laughs> Amanda's playing with everybody's life. Even Emmanuel from the short. Did I say the short? From the sand child. Whatever. The short of sand. Is looking at Amanda and is like, probably because it's not a female elimination day. So she's just taking it like a joke. Nelson is like, this is exactly what I knew would happen. She thinks everything is a joke. So she's not taking it seriously. And that could cost somebody here to go into elimination on our team. And we need to win, y'all. So they still hustle, 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 hustle. And they actually get really, really good time. Like to the point where I'm like, because they showed it like 15, 16. So I'm like, oh. Oh, did they get it? Like, it looked like they, they might have got it faster than Team Emerald, y'all. I'm like, please, Lord. Oh, my God. And I low-key want Team Ruby to win, even though I'm Team, I'm always Team CT. Just because, you know, the old underdog of it all. You know what I mean? Like, prove them wrong. Like, ugh. So, y'all, they get to shore, and they put their gem on the podium right after pulling it out and getting out of the chest, the whole thing. So, TJ announces that it is tied. Well, it's not tied, but it is close between two teams, and that's Team Emerald and Team Ruby. Team Sapphire wouldn't in there. Ooh, they, they pissing CT off, child. CT, CT basically says that he knows that they have a lot of potential, but that they need to, like, regroup. Like, we need to have a meeting and decide what's happening, right? So, it's between Team Emerald and Team Ruby. But then, all in all, y'all, guess who is the winner? Guess who's the winner? Can you tell by my demeanor? That I'm so tired of Team Emerald's ass always winning. Like, oh my god. Is this rigged? Is this, is this, who did we offend? Who did we offend? Huh? How can the couches team continue to win? Who did we offend? I want to know. God, this is so annoying. This is like worse than when I couldn't stand Johnny Bananas and he would always win. Like, this is just, oh my God. At least Bananas was entertaining. Like, oh my God. And he didn't like pretend to not be a snake. Bananas knew he was a snake. Casey, girl, I know you a snake. Ooh, and the snake keeps winning. So annoying, but whatever. They're, they're good. And so they won. So they are the agency again for the fourth time, y'all. Like, what is this like? How did I find myself here? How do we get here? Like, it's just, it's it's so much. CT, like, get your team together. I don't understand. Like, why are they doing this to you? It's, 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 it's unbecoming of a champion. Okay, my G, like, come on. Like, ring, wrangle them up. Wrangle, was it wrangle? <laughs> wrangle them together. So, y'all, they get to, back to the house, right? Corey already feels like he has a target on his back because they threw him into elimination before. And, you know, he's just kind of nervous about what's going to happen, right? So, basically, after the win, of course, Team Emerald is very obnoxious. Obnoxious, namely Devin is obnoxious like he's obviously on a power trip you know he keeps giving his dumb ass speeches every time they get into deliberation like he's a mafia boss like sir oh my god you know some people you just can't give power to like they just they don't know how to handle it they um, are kind of discussing who they want to put in and they basically are like three of the guys should be nervous that Logan and Corey because you know obviously Logan is a rookie and Corey has been thrown in before so he's not really in their alliance like that so and they but they want to make the right decision on who to put in so that it doesn't backfire on them and they end up getting somebody that's going to come in and infiltrate their team and that's what they're trying to avoid y'all so everybody gets ready they go to the club you know all some 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 drama be happening at the club y'all so they get to the club and Corey pulls josh to the side and Corey is basically like buttering josh up you know talking about team emerald y'all are killing it y'all are doing so good and josh is like yeah you know you came close bro like you guys did really well and you know Corey's like close isn't close enough like you know how the game can be. So basically, Corey's trying to read Josh to figure out, like, who do they want to put in? And Josh is like, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard in this game, you know, to figure out. Like, I got relationships with everybody and everything like that. And I guess somehow in that conversation, I didn't really see it. But Josh kind of makes Corey feel at ease. Like, you know, he's not on the chopping block, basically, right? But as y'all know, uh, Josh is, like, I guess has become brothers now with Logan and has, you know, promised that he's going to protect him as Logan has said he's going to protect Josh. Josh, but Josh pretty much has relationships with everybody in the house at this point. So Team Emerald is talking about them possibly not being able to avoid being infiltrated this time around. And so they're like, let's just make the best decision for who to throw in. And even if it's somebody that comes and infiltrates us, whoever gets infiltrated and you go, you have to go to another team, just throw yourself into elimination and then you can get back on our team, right? So basically, or, or they'll throw that person into elimination and then they can try to win and get back on their team. And then that 
that's like the only option that they have. That shouldn't scare them, right? So then Nelson is calling a team meeting, okay? Because <laughs> he's not happy with their performance that day. So everybody's sitting down, him, Big T, Logan, Corey, and he calls over Amanda. Amanda is living her life like it's golden. Amanda's how much she even forgot that she was on Team Ruby, that she went to the wrong team, child. So Amanda comes to sit down and Nelson is basically low-key scolding everybody that, you know, we need to step it up. And even Big T says that he under she understands that Nelson is passionate and um, emotional about the game. He plays with his emotions, which is fine, but he doesn't need to like scold everybody. I didn't see him scolding everybody, but I guess she felt that. And definitely he was like kind of getting on Amanda because he's like, you know, I love you like a little sister, but I felt like you didn't take anything seriously today. Like you were joking around. Amanda's like, y'all didn't tell me anything to do. And then didn't eventually deny, start helping out. And Corey was like, yeah, but it was a little too late. And you took it like, you took it like too much of a joke. Like this was serious. This is a guy elimination day and you should be worried about the other people on your team basically, right? So then Amanda's like, oh my God, like please like get over it. Like it was not my fault that we lost today. Y'all are not gonna try to put it on me. Y'all were losing before I got on your team. So don't try to make it like I'm the reason that y'all are losing. Absolutely not. And so Nelson is like, why are you yelling? Why are you walking away? You know, Amanda just, just always does the most as does Nelson. But in this moment, it was mostly Amanda getting up and talking about, oh my God, get over it, Nelson. Did I blame you when you lost the pillar challenge or whatever for us? I didn't blame you. He was like, I blame myself. Yeah, I did, I did say I was at fault. She was like, well, I never blamed you. Like y'all, we lost today because y'all weren't good enough. Y'all weren't good enough. And that's why we lost. It's not my fault. Get over it. It's no big deal. Who cares? I don't care. And Nelson is like, that's the problem. You don't care. You don't care. You can't have a rational conversation. You just have to start yelling and carrying on. And she's like, if you want to find, if you want to think that I'm the one that's dragging y'all back, I'll play for the other team all day. I play for the other team all day. It is what it is. Like y'all are not good enough. That's why you lost. And if it's so bad, then why don't you throw yourself in elimination and switch teams then? Do that. How about that? Right? Nelson is like, I cannot wait to get Amanda off of my team. <laughs> and I get it. Honestly, she really wasn't taking it seriously though. Like she was joking. It was a joke to her. She was not serious. Not doing the Titanic. Like on the whole, she's like, come on girl. Come on. Now. Like that's not helpful at all. You weren't doing, they said organize the rope. Like you two organize the rope. She wasn't organizing it at all. So basically it's the next day and Emerald Cell is discussing what they're going to do in deliberation, right? So they're um, bringing up names that they want to throw in. So first they decide, they're, they're talking about Logan, that, you know, he's a rookie and they should just go ahead and throw him in. And Josh is like, no, because he would rather not put Logan in, that basically that's his bro, that he's trying to save him. Devin is the one that mentioned Logan's name. So then Josh is like, what about Corey? Because Corey has already been into elimination and he's kind of a wild card like we don't really know where he stands and actually Josh brings up Corey's name and says that we should put Corey in because he's been to multiple finals he's ranked top three every time I mean the last couple of ones Josh I mean Corey used to suck but we won't talk about the times past he's he's redeemed himself so he's like it would be better they would everyone would understand that it's better for their game to take him out of the game and so they're like okay Devin looks kind of uneasy about it so it's like okay and I did forget that little tidbit that Josh fully brought up Corey's name first. They also bring up CT's name, but they're like, you know, CT, the chances of CT not coming, if he if he does get taken out by some, you know, stroke of luck, that they would have knocked out a big player in the game. But the problem now is that everybody has relationships with everybody, basically. Logan has a relationship with Josh, Devin has a relationship with Kyle, and CT basically has a relationship with everybody. So anybody that they put in at this point is gonna cause some type of friction because everyone has relationships with everybody, right? So then now they're at the deliberation. Devin gives his dumbass speech about every time we're in here it gets harder and harder. I don't know why he's the spokesperson even when he's sitting in the back. It's so annoying. Um, and you know we got a lot of hard decisions to make you know and like he just does the whole power trip thing and it's so stupid. So out the gate CT speaks up and it's like you know what I'm gonna go first. I just want to say that I have proven you know that I'm loyal to the Vet Alliance that I don't want to break up the Vet Alliance. I want us to keep it as long as we possibly can so we have no other options. He loves his team. He feels like they may may not be the strongest team, but that they have a, they're strong at heart. And he wants to them to honor an old man's wishes, basically, and not throw him or his teammates into the elimination. Right? And I'm like, it was like a really beautiful, endearing, great speech. You know what I mean? Like, he was like just you know, great. And then Ashley, Ashley is just so uh, it's like, girl, like what? Where did they get you from? Like this nigga, so, she's so negative. She's like, CT, you're just scared going to elimination. Just say that. You're scared, go home. Just say that. 
Like, girl, oh my God, just eat dirt. Leave us alone. Oh, my God. Just so, she always has some type of negative, like, commentary. Like, yuck. Ugh. And so, basically, um, Devin kind of alludes to the fact that they haven't made a decision yet at all, that they need some clarity, and that they're going to help them get some clarity. Corey's like, I don't understand what clarity you need. There's a rookie sitting right next to you. That would make the most sense instead of throwing in a vet. Nelson decides to apologize to his team and is like, you know, he didn't mean to come off so strong that he's just really passionate about the team. Basically apologizes to his team, right? And Amanda's like, I don't buy Nelson's apology. I just feel like he's trying to, you know, gain some type of favor with people and he, she thinks it's bullshit, basic. I'm like, y'all really just be throwing y'all friendships out the window. Like, I'm so, I would never say that about my friend. Like, what? I guess she feels a way because she feels like he called her out. I just, I'm like, girl, what? Basically, you told us your friend's lying. Like, it's just, y'all just be doing a lot, but whatever. And then Kyle is like, look, if I already went in. If I go in again, everybody's team is up for grabs. So just know that. That just is what it is. Like, he says he's not going to make any promises that, oh, I'm not going to come to your team and make you feel better. If you throw me in, everyone's up for grabs. And that's just, and I'm like, well, that's what it is. So then Josh says that he has relationships with everybody and he needs them to basically help him make his decision that they're not helping him right now. So then Corey is like, well, you're going to, you guys are going to make whatever decision is best for you. I'm not going to beg to not go into elimination. Just know that if you do throw me into elimination, I'm coming for everybody. Everybody's up for grabs. And if y'all throw me in, I'm going to infiltrate Team Emerald. And I'm a y'all's team up. So just, you know, that just is what it is. And he's so confident. He's like, if I go in and I win, that's just, it is what it is. So just know that, right? Josh is like, oh. then they, you know, they discuss whatever and they end up, guess who, y'all? Yeah, voting Corey's ass into elimination. And he's not shocked. He kind of felt it coming. You know, he'd been kind of saying that his target is on his back and he's just like, it is what it is. Casey gives some, uh, yeah, it was really hard. Guy. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Stop lying. It wasn't hard. I knew you was going to pick Corey. We the people, we see you. Okay. So then Nelson is like, can I ask why y'all would pick Corey? And Casey's like, who else would it be? Uh, um, a rookie? Hello? Even if all of y'all would have voted for the rookie and Josh would have kept loyalty to Logan and not voted him in, Logan would have been go going in. Like, what? That doesn't even make sense. What do you mean, who else? Like, so clearly it's a personal thing that y'all have against Corey. Like, yeah, Co Corey's on the outs. So Corey's like, it is what it is. I see it now. They do not have my back. I'm never going to have any of their backs. Like, that just is what it is. And Nelson is basically trying to talk about, you know, what could have happened or whatever. And Corey's like, I don't want to talk about what happened. I don't want to talk about what could have happened. You know, it is what it is. I got to go into elimination. I got to get myself ready to go into elimination, right? He says, you know, Nelson is safe. Good luck to all the guys, basically CT, Kyle, uh, and Logan. And that, you know, may the best man get in there. Whoever gets in there with me, that's who, you know, needs to have good luck. And then he says to Team Emerald, y'all should be nervous though. Because when I come back, I'm y'all's team up and that's on GP right and so then he's outside whatever and Devin is basically trying to say that you're blaming people that shouldn't be blaming you're making threats and if that's what you want to do then that's fine but people didn't have anything to do with it and Corey is like Devin you were like the ringleader you're the mouthpiece for your team and he does act like the mouthpiece for his team and Devin is like well could you be wrong have you ever been wrong and Corey's like yeah he's like well could this be one of those times that you're wrong because I did fight for you and so Devin basically tells Nelson because Corey's not trying to hear Corey walks away and Devin is like, well, I have been trying to get Logan voted in, but Josh keeps saving him and I keep getting outvoted. So I'm not against Corey or whatever. Corey's not buying that shit. And I, I don't know that either. I feel like you still vote. If you voted for him, then you still helped him go into elimination. Like you, you didn't, you probably did not vote for him, but we'll see on the aftermath. So then he goes up to Josh. So Josh is like, you know, stop making threats. If you want to make threats, vote. And Corey's like, I'm not making threats to anybody. I'm not saying you should be scared. I'm just saying that is what it is. Like you had an opportunity to save me and you saved somebody that you just met, Logan, right? The rookie. And you messed up Fessy's game. You're the reason that Fessy ended up going home because of that whole blow up. And then now you voted me into elimination twice. Like, what am I supposed to think? What are you talking about? And Josh is trying to play. It was really hard, bro. I had relationships. It was really hard, bro. But no, you brought up his name, Josh. You absolutely did bring up his name. It's not like everybody else brought up his name and you just had to go with the flow. You brought up his name to save Logan. So he needs to just own that. And Corey was 100% right about that. Then Corey 
Corey gets ready to go into the elimination, right? So Corey gets in the elimination and he makes this speech and he's real, you know, confident. And he's like, you know, I thought some people on Team Emerald had my back, but clearly that's not the case. He's like, but you know what? This right here, he picks up the sand and he's like, this right here is what I do it for. Put up or shut up. Like, it is what it is. DJ's like, all right, cool. And he's like, okay, so who do you want to put in with you? So he gives a speech, you know, he plays like he wants to put Nelson, but he jokes and he's like, no, Nelson, you know, I want to thank him for everything that he's ever done for me. I'm definitely not choosing him. I want him to win. So he's definitely not up for grabs. CT, Logan, and Kyle, you know, I have to do what's best for me. If I beat CT, that would be a good look for me because he's a champ. Kyle, it is, was it? I forget what he says about Kyle, but who cares? So all in all, in his big speech, he ends up picking Logan to go down into elimination with him, right? So y'all, they're in elimination. Logan makes a little joke that like, hey, well, at least somebody from Team Ruby will win. And either me or him will finally win something. So it is what it is. This is the game. Let's go. So basically, y'all, the elimination is like whip the rope or like the, that tug of war game. I'll put the name of the elimination here. I can't recall it right now. Basically, they're standing on these big, huge spheres. They have to hold these this big rope and pull the rope from each other. Basically, whip the person off of the rope so that they fall off of their platform. And whoever does that two out of three times wins. And the rope is on fire, right? Not where they hold it, but in the middle is on fire, right? So y'all, they start going. And you know, Corey does this, you know, rope whipping thing. But Logan is a tricky one. Logan is like very skilled and technical. Big spheres and it's not really stable. So at first, Corey kind of has like a little bit of upper hand. He almost gets Logan and Logan starts shaking and everything. And Nelson's like, yeah, yeah, you about to get him, bro. You about to get him, bro. But Logan finds his footing, right? Y'all, then Logan starts to think strategy. So Corey initially went in and was like, he wants to tire Logan out. Y'all, that don't work. Logan don't get tired. So then Logan's thing is like, he's going to pull whenever Corey is like making a big swing. And once he said that, I was like, oh God, I don't know. I was going to look for Corey. I really wanted Corey to win because I really want him to mess up Team Emerald, right? So I'm like, rude for Corey. But the technique that um, Logan has, so anytime Corey whips, that's when Logan, Logan pulls. And that, he did that a few times, y'all. And he's sure enough, got Corey off the first time. So then Corey's like, okay, let's go again. Like, you know, let me get my head in the game, whatever. Logan is still has his, his, his trick that he's trying to do to pull him off. And Corey is like, his forearms are shot. His grip is gone. You know, he, he don't know, he, but he's going to give it his all, y'all. And sure enough, Corey whips that thing one more time. And Logan pulls him and, and he gets him off, y'all. And Corey loses. <sighs> and Logan wins. And he's not going to infiltrate Team Emerald. And, you know, Corey ends up going home. He gives a really nice speech, you know, kind of tributing Nelson and everything that he's done. And that he really, really wants Nelson to win. And that he knows how much it means to him. He wants him to win it for his mom and his family. And that he can't wait to go home and kiss his girls. And that he's missed them, you know. So, it's, it's you know, it's kind of sad. Like, he gets emotional. TJ asks Logan, hey, you know, what are you going to do? Who's What team are you going to go back to, right? Are you going to go back to your team, Team Ruby? Or are you going to infiltrate another team? So, remember, Logan said, I don't, oh, I didn't say it. But Logan had said in deliberation that it was Team Ruby until death, right? So, I figured he's going to go back to Team Ruby. But Logan says, y'all, that that Team Ruby until death died once a member of Team Ruby, Corey, chose him to go into elimination. So he's like, I can't go back to that team. I was already thrown into elimination by that team. So he's like, now it is going to be Team Sapphire because I'm not going to infiltrate Team Emerald. I'm not going to do that to Josh. And he's going to go to Team Sapphire. So now Logan is on Team Sapphire with CT, Kyle, and Amanda right so they're stacked y'all like they got a solid team if they can really like focus they can pull some things out so and so see remember just like every single time we put somebody in elimination we make team sapphire stronger i mean they still like won but i i i feel like now they, they have a pretty solid team you know so that is it for this episode you guys be back here next week for episode 14's recap i will surely have that for you guys go ahead and like comment and subscribe for more challenge content more reality recaps more reaction videos. I know I haven't done a reaction video in a little bit, but I have a bunch coming up. So please stay tuned for that. Hit the post notification bell so you'll be notified every time that I post a video. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.